The Centre Verde opened 13 years ago and originally it opened as an eco lodge, eco cabins to teach people about the environment here in Bolivia. After being open for just one year, the animals started to arrive and that happened in the form of a monkey that needed to be rescued and Vicky and Marcelo who own and run the Centre Verde decided that they'd take on the monkey. 12 years later, 600 plus animals later, this is what's here. They're now an animal refuge. They receive no government funding whatsoever, but all the animals that come here come from government agencies all over Bolivia and the animals are brought here because they can't be rehomed and they can't be released into the wild. So that means that those animals have to spend the rest of their life in captivity. So right now I am in the middle of what will be a massive new aviary. It's a new project, started a couple of months ago and it's well underway. I don't think you can see how huge it is. Some birds in smaller aviaries at the moment, smaller enclosures, and that's because they all come from captivity, they were pets. Most of them have had their wings clipped, they can't fly anymore. Because they're given so many animals by the government, that the amount of space that they have here, 15 hectares, is not enough space for 600 animals to happily live together. So they've had to come up with ways of using the space that allow the animals to have a good quality of life, but to not fight with each other. Loads of parrots here, and it just shows you how many of these creatures are brought and sold. They are not objects, they are animals. And being here, seeing them unable to fly is just, it's painful. This aviary is huge. I mean, I don't know if you can see the scale of it. It just goes up and up and up. It's gonna be filled with natural vegeta vegetation. And even the birds that can't fly will be able to climb because they can do that. Um, and they'll all live together as well. So it'll be a huge bird population and a huge aviary, which is done with no government funding at all. She was a mascot for the Bolivian basketball team. Uh, they used to parade her around the basketball court with a, with a wee t-shirt on her back. Um, and then after the game, they would put her into a uh, dark room and as a result, she is mostly blind. There is only so much space here and right now they are at their very, very limits. They say they're gonna stop, but the government keep bringing them animals. When it's 11 p.m. and someone arrives ringing the doorbell with another bunch of animals, how can they really say no? So they keep on taking more and more animals. We're on our way to meet the bears, which is very exciting. Just going through the jungle to get there. The spectre bears are the only bears that are native to the Andes, and they're found in Bolivia as well as Peru, Venezuela, other places my brain's gone a bit dead the male he has a 3,000 square meter enclosure the female she's much smaller she has a 1200 square meter enclosure they are absolutely amazing beautiful peaceful tranquil creatures and um, both the male and the female were taken <clears throat> as babies from their mothers in the wild so as cubs they were taken away from their mothers which is just <sighs> scary it's really difficult to understand how humans could think that that is at all okay. In other countries, bears, the bears are protected. In Bolivia, they're not. There's no rules, no laws, no regulations. And at the moment, Vicky and her husband, Marcelo, are really pushing to make sure that the bears are protected because they roam in such a huge area. It would also mean that the environment in which they live in, which is a huge area, would also be protected, thus protecting other animals. To feed the animals here, it costs around 13,000 US dollars a month. That's just to feed them. That doesn't include the cost of their 15 permanent members of staff. Most of the animals that are here come from the illegal pet trade. And I was astounded to find out that the illegal pet trade is the third biggest illegal market in the world after weapons and drugs. That's huge. Every time you see a parrot, a monkey, any kind of wild animal in captivity. For every one of those animals that survives, 10 of them die. The work they do here is absolutely vital. They're looking after animals that have nowhere else to go and they're doing it with literally no constant support or no constant help. They're living month to month, hopefully having enough to feed the animals and making money by educating people, by bringing school groups here, by bringing university groups here and teaching them about animals, about the pet trade and allowing people to study 
the huge number of species that they have here. So I bet you're looking at this and you're thinking, Clara, how can I help? What can I do? There are numerous things that you can do. Of course, you can make a donation. If you wanna do that, just click on the link below. You can volunteer here. If you wanna find out about volunteer opportunities, click on the link below. If you're visiting Bolivia and you're coming to La Paz, you can come and stay here in the tree house, in the eco lodge, or in one of the cabins just like the one that I stayed in. From La Paz to get here, it cost me just seven pounds, and it will cost me seven pounds to get back. That's literally nothing. And when you stay here, every meal you have here, every dessert you have here, every ice cream, every beer, all of the profits, 100%, goes to caring for the animals. As well as that, if you are a vet, if you are somebody that's at university studying to be a vet, and you wanna come and look at exotic animals, perhaps this is the place that you would wanna do it. There are so many ways to help. Make sure you visit the website, and if you can, just donate a few pounds, because these animals, this place, the people, everything about it is as brilliant as it can possibly be. They're under pressure, they have a lot of animals to house, and they're doing the very best they can with the limited resources that they have. I've had an absolutely amazing stay here. I haven't made my bed though. It's just a bit magical, and the people make it extra magical because they're so passionate about what they do. Some parrots, just everywhere. Animals, monkeys, parrots and of course the beautiful bears, who I'm totally in love with. Um, I'm really sad to go, and if I come back to Bolivia, I will definitely be coming back here. Oh, guys, make sure that if you can, you donate a little something. Please make sure that you like my video, share my video, and subscribe to my channel for more adventures like this one. <sighs> what a lovely day.